you know, abuse against women about anyone. And sometimes it's hard when we, we're standing here and people are gone and we're talking about everything's going to be all right. But we're standing here and we have to fight for others so that everything is going to be all right. So let's not, you know, confuse our messages. It's not all right. But because we're here, we're going to make it all right. So I'd like to introduce Nadine Williams, and she too is going to do a piece and a speech on from her book and her experience. Thank you. Wrong mic. Good night, everyone. It truly is an honor for me to stand here before you tonight. And as I walked through the pathway, I really wasn't prepared for such a sight, but it really, really moved me and touched me in ways that are indescribable. You see, had it not been for the grace of the Almighty, there goes I. And because of that fact, it is my responsibility to open my mouth and speak. Speak for women that are too weak to speak. Speak for women that are afraid to speak. I recall walking to my mailbox in Northeast Brampton. Had to be about mm, some four months ago or so. And I saw this lady, I said hello. She was very shy. She couldn't really speak English so well, but I insisted on a conversation, and I'm very, very glad I did. Because in that conversation, I came to know a woman, a woman who is new to Canada, a woman that is not permitted outside of her home, outside of her neighborhood, except it be her husband that takes her. A woman in Canada, that is not permitted. She didn't know where the grocery store was. Her husband went to the grocery store for her in Canada, not in India, in Canada. It is for people like her that I open my mouth and speak. I speak to your hearts and I ask you to say hello. Say hello to a lady by the mailbox. Say hello to a lady at the grocery store. And go a little further than hello. Say, how are you? How's your day? Have a wonderful day. You might be surprised to know that in that conversation, she might, just might, open up and tell you a little bit about her deepest, darkest, darkest secrets that's kept inside her home in Canada. This happens in Canada. And though it might not affect us, we might feel like, you know, our lives are just so rosy and cozy. I don't know what they're talking about. Open your hearts and open your minds and, and, and reach out to someone. Volunteer at a shelter. Spend an hour out of a month, an hour out of three months and give back to someone, uh, someone in need. I will be sharing a poem from my book, Pen on Fire, and it's called, She Stands. Battered and beaten, yet she stands. Bruised, used, abused, and confused, yet she stands. Broken nose with teary eyes wide shut, Yet she stands on the brink of an unnatural disaster. Yet she stands sending friends and loved ones in an utter state of shock and denial even. Yet she stands with the last ounce of strength within her. Yes, she stands defying the expected end with dignity intact. Yes, she stands stronger for having fought for it. Why is it for having brainstormed through it? Spiritually sound for having supped tea at high noon with 
God Almighty himself through it. Yes, she stands courageously victorious, standing unabashed as a winning participant, willing to walk away and embrace change. Yes, she stands firm like ice masses coalesced into a glacier over time. Yes, she stands simply to say, look not upon where I've been, but where I'm going. My best days are before me, and yesterday was just that. Yesterday, she stands, she stands, she stands. Thank you. Thank you, Nadine Williams. I'd like to now introduce the real son. Uh, she's a performer and um, has a touching piece for us as well to remember these women here. <laughs> 